Lunchly is an ultra-processed packaged food item promoted by social media titans Mr. Beast, Logan Paul, and KSI. The initial story about their questionable nutritional and ingredient composition has been supplanted with one about the presence of mold in the cheese of some of their pizza packages. Part 1. The AMLP I want to hone in on a particular image to start my analysis, the assembled moldy Lunchly pizza. I'll sometimes abbreviate this AMLP. This image is interesting and ironical to me because it's not an object that exists and would never come into existence in the real world. Anybody who encountered the moldy cheese, if they were trying to consume the product and not just use it for content, would throw it away. They wouldn't even get to the point of fully assembling the pizzas. And yet, the defining image by which people engage with this product is the assembled moldy lunchly pizza, a purely invented object, the AMLP. Part 2. Spectacle To understand this, I will introduce Guy Debord, a French Marxist theorist and filmmaker, and his 1967 essay, The Society of the Spectacle. The first two theses of the essay are exceedingly clear. In post-industrial societies where mass production and media predominate, life is presented as an immense accumulation of spectacles. Everything that was directly experienced has been replaced with its representation in the form of images. As reality is increasingly represented as images to be experienced by sight alone, Eventually, a completely separate pseudo-world of images emerges, where the actual reality is only represented, but never actually experienced, merely performed, and eventually simulated. The online version of this essay that I'm reading provides a keenly relevant example of representation replacing direct experience in a footnote for the opening passages. The practice of gathering food and hunting animals is replaced with buying packaged meat at the grocery store, and then again by pre-cooked ready-to-eat meals abstracting the original ingredients that went into the food. This reaches yet another level in cooking shows and mukbang videos that separate us from physically interacting with the food altogether. Note that the spectacle here is not synonymous with the common usage of the word spectacle referring to a discrete, specific, awesome event and its ensuing media circus, although that is part of the spectacle. The spectacle here is a web of social relationships which continuously invent images and circulates them. Let's examine this process through the assembled moldy lunchly pizza. Part 3. Rosanna Pansino In the circulation of images surrounding the AMLP, the pivotal episode is Rosanna Pansino's video on October 19th titled, I Tried Lunchly, It Was Moldy, Shot in Glorious 4K. Previously, videos circulated on TikTok of the moldy cheese compartment. Pansino, with high production value, transformed the image under discussion. A streamlined mass media apparatus powered by 14.5 million subscribers birthed a brand new image of the assembled moldy lunchly pizza, which became widely reproduced and circulated. She, or someone on her team, had the idea of not just showing the mold in the container, but actually building a pizza with it and displaying it. Note that this whole transformation process exists purely in the world of images. There is no physical transformation or direct lived experience with lunchly. This is another step in the evolution of the representation of lunchly from an abstract announced food concept to institute videos of people opening the product, and now, 4K video, including the decisive image of the AMLP. The story then exploded as people could replay the video artifact to perpetuate the spectacle. The participation and consumption of Lunchly content far exceeds the actual engagement with the physical product. This is clearest with the assembled moldy Lunchly pizza. The AMLP is a product that nobody engages with because it exists purely in image space. It is an object created as a prop to be disgusting, to be impossible to engage with. With such a clean break between image and reality established by the AMLP, we can then pull back. So with Lunchly as with all products. Consider this shot, where Rosanna Pansino presents an assembled non-moldy Lunchables pizza next to the AMLP. Though she criticizes Lunchables as also being ultra-processed, there's the implication that the Lunchables pizza is more real in some sense for example, as real food that is edible. However, we are separated by so many levels of abstraction from the pizzas that neither of them can be considered real. In one obvious sense, they are just images on the screen. We cannot consume them, just as we cannot smoke Magriette's pipe. In another sense, neither of them are food even in the context of the video. They are sampled only enough as is necessary to generate a reaction and an evaluation, not for sustenance or even enjoyment. These products were purchased to be mocked and to be not eaten. It then becomes clear how representational the entire world of the video is. Neither pizza exists in reality. But also, the cutting boards are unused, the books in the background unread. The outdoor presented through the window is likely an extension of the set and not a real part of the outdoors. 
And of course, even if it were really outdoors, we cannot touch that grass through the panes of the screen and of the video player and of the physical window, wherever it may be. I should interject that this is not a critique about individual people. This video that you're watching now is also part of the spectacle. I'm not a moral paragon who is somehow outside of it through my awareness. Inversely, there's no moral critique towards Rosanna Pansino's mastery of the image and communication through images, because the premise of the spectacle is that this is the only way that we can circulate ideas. There's also no claim that she is being fake or false and this is somehow bad. The point is that in our society, we all traffic in images because this is the language given to us. When we share memes, when we introduce a friend to a video we saw, when we try and collect information about the world. Part 4. Consequences Though it is beyond any of us to face, there are consequences of this spectacular thinking. Consider a specific criticism levied by Rosanna Pansino towards Lunchly. She points out that it appears Lunchly is sourcing from the same supplier for the chips as Lunchables. However, this process is described as ripping off other brands. This is an accusation of a crime in image space. She makes many other charges relating to contamination and health, but this one in particular is interesting. The image crime obscures the material reality of the food system where this behavior is widely accepted, in a way that is tremendously beyond Mr. Beast or any one person's ability to control. Most videos commentating on this scandal are framed from the perspective of reputational damage to the Mr. Beast brand, an injury in image space, since we are so abstracted from and presume that nobody is sincerely eating, much less producing, Lunchly and the AMLP. The source factory is undiscussed, in part because the Lunchly LLC obfuscates its supplier. The implied remedy in this situation, as with most franchising controversies, is dissociation with the producer, but this does not change the material reality for industrial food production. This is made clear by a parallel spectacle that impinges on us more materially. The ongoing huge number of food recalls in 2024, 740 in the United States, double the number 23 and likely to triple the number of 2022. The necessity of recalling contaminated products weakens the image layer and the illusion of choice with food products. The introduction of a specific factory from which contaminated food originated makes more obvious the reality that food products are repackaged and interchangeable and encourages us to think about how goods are produced and the reality of the conditions in our supply chain. But still, we cannot fully pierce through the veil. Look, Boar's Head killed 10 people with hysteriosis through neglect, recently. But since we can only engage with this fact through images, the company can easily control what we think about this horrible crime. Though there are verbal descriptions of the horror conditions at the factory where this outbreak originated, including black mold, mildew, and insects, there are notably no images of these conditions and no images of the victims, which are located all around the country, preventing the same type of coverage of this event. Newscasts are forced to show the plain exterior of the factory, and generic images of bacterium and empty store shelves, images that are several times less shocking and actually mundane for something which is orders of magnitude worse than the Lunchly contamination scandal that has been portrayed in the most negative light. This is of course one of the many issues in the industrialized food system, which is rife with environmental labor abuses, including more recently the realization of child labor in the domestic supply chain. Labor in particular is obscured. The high processing and uniformity of food products ensure that our food will never reveal if human suffering was involved in its production to the extent that slave-free food is something that has to be communicated on the packaging. Part 5. Mr. Beast! In this sense, there's something ironic about Mr. Beast's position. He has become massive through a mastery of the image, but that firmly situates him to a world where the image is the only real world that people can engage in and levy criticism through. His videos are reported to be money losing, but he simply cannot seem to create something through his brands that people will buy recurrently. Put another way, without his brand, he could simply be another one of millions of unscrupulous business people who try to upsell products of poor quality, concealed behind webs of LLCs and shell corporations, and not be held personally responsible for what are ultimately systemic society-wide failures. It is the thing that distinguishes his products that causes their downfall. In a world where influence is everything, the biggest influencer of them all can't sell a product, as he is locked away from the real world. 